Now we do the little cottage in the bush. I've rubbed the undercoat in already here for you. A little bit of each colour we've got. A little bit of blue. Not much blue. Just a little bit. Naples yellow. Now this is the background behind the forest. So it's a misty colour. So I'll rub a few misty colours in there. A bit of Naples yellow, a bit of blue, a little bit of crimson. And that'll give us a nice light tone for the background. A little bit of purple too. So if I rub them all well in, we'll have a variation of colour in the background there. And next is all the branches that you have in the forest. With a little brush, pick up two or three colours and just throw these branches on, up and down. Now, as we're going to cross a lot of them out, you don't have to go to a lot of trouble to make them look right. So we just throw them on, do the misty branches in the bush effect. And after we put the foliage on, you can come back again with this little brush and touch up the branches and put them where you think they should be exactly. So that'll do for the moment, for the misty branches in the bush look. Sometimes they turn out real well, especially with a bit of Naples yellow on. That'll do now. Then for the foliage in the distant bush, I'm loading purple on one side of my brush and Naples yellow on the other side. And with a dab dab brush stroke, I can get these little trees back in the bush there. And again, if they don't turn out as you want them, don't worry, we'll put some chrome green or something over the top. It doesn't matter where I put this foliage, I try and keep a few branches showing that we put on, but we do keep it facing in again to give you this draw your eye into the middle of the picture thing. I'll put them on here quickly. We cover most of these up with the tree trunks and the little cottage and all that's coming in front of this. So put it on quite quickly here. I've been painting for a long time. You won't be as quick as I am, but if you watch your brush strokes carefully and try to get them down to a minimum, so each time you put paint on, should be a deliberate effort to put it where you want it. And if it's not right, make a deliberate effort again to cross it out. That gives us a background foliage effect. I might rub the big brush over this in a moment and show you how to make it look even more misty than the sample painting that we were looking at a moment ago. And you can get a lot of trouble with this if you wish, but I'm hurrying up with it. You can put little tiny foliage right back there in the background if you wish. The lighter the tone, the further, further back the foliage will look. bit dark there, but we'll put some green in front of that. Now I didn't do this on the sample painting, but on this painting, if you just bring your big brush through it like that, it takes it back a little bit and gives you a more misty effect. It's one stroke. There we are. Now for the foreground and the background under the trees. A bit of Indian yellow and white. The chrome green came in there too. It's nice. We'll get a nice bright colour back here. I think we'll put the cottage over here again. So I'll put a bit of shadow over here where the cottage will be. And the big tree is going to go in this corner. Quickly colour it in. Now with a grass brush, the little fan brush. We can touch this up to make it look like grass. There's a bit missing there, but it doesn't matter. We can come back later and put something in there. That's a grass. Now for a little cottage. Take a flat brush. This is a number eight flat brush. And paint a box. Just a square box. Sitting there. And we'll put a roof on it. Pick up some white paint and some burnt sienna at the same time. I've got quite a lot on the brush there. I picked up the white first in a big blob, then I'll run it through the burnt sienna. That'll give us the rust on the roof look. 
And each brush stroke represents a sheet of iron or a couple of sheets of iron. I'll put a little bit more burnt sienna in there to give it a rusty look. And a little veranda on the front. Now the windows, it doesn't matter what colour you put in here, just a change of colour gives you the window. And the little veranda floor, just colour it in. There's always a bit missing up here I've got to put in. A little shed out the back maybe. And we'll put that water tank in, just a brush stroke like that. Doesn't look exactly like a water tank, but nothing that is in this painting looks exactly like it is as long as it represents what it is. With a little round brush, picking up two colours again at once, we'll detail the top of the roof. It doesn't matter whether it comes off light or dark, whichever comes off the brush first, it doesn't matter. Down the back, across there. It's better to have a white line maybe than a dark line, usually. Detail it like that. Around the windows, It's just straight brush strokes. If you try to make all these brush strokes perfect, it'll make your house look like a plastic house in a rugged bushland. So try to make it a rugged looking house also. It's hard to decide how neat you should be. And when you get used to having it looking rough but still look quite nice, you'll find it's easier to paint. You won't be tempted to fiddle around to make it look perfect. Now that's a little house, it's not a very neat little house, but it's not the only thing in the picture. And a tank stand. Houses always look tidier if you put a bit of grass around the front of them, like that. I'll show you how to do a path now. This lends itself to a path here. I'm picking up white and burnt sienna this time, it doesn't matter what colour and give us this crisscross brush stroke coming away from the house. And as you come away, make it a bigger brush stroke as it comes towards you. And then by touching up the grass around there and crossing out the bits that aren't worth worrying about, you'll end up with just a little bit left that looks like a path. And what makes it look like a path is this crisscross brush stroke getting bigger as it comes towards you. Now this big tree we're going to put in, I'm going to put a very big tree in here so we can plaster the paint on. You can go anywhere there in fact. You can put quite a lot of paint on. The side of the knife, pull it down. Well, that's going to be a big tree there. And then I'll put the white on and then I'll put the tones of the bark in. I'm wiping my brush every time, my knife I mean, every time. It's important to wipe your knife every time, otherwise you end up with a dirty colour instead of the colour you want. Now, that's not a very good tree trunk, but we'll touch it up. A bit darker down here will look better. And the other trunk down there. Now, a little bit of effort, I should be able to make this tree look a bit better. Put a bit of colour in down around here. Colour there. As bold as you can, as big a knife strokes as you can, and put on as much paint as you can with one go. But keep the shape of the tree by moving your knife in the shape of the tree. If you moved your knife across there, it would spoil the whole tree shape. So keep your knife moving up and down in that direction. A bit more colour up there. I'd like to see this tree shining out a bit here, so I'll add a little bit more burnt sienna and white there. Well, that's all right. Tidy the grass up around the bottom of the tree. I've put crimson in there. You could put purple or burnt sienna or burnt umber, but I just had some crimson I picked up and put there. If you're going to run a line down the edge of the tree to detail it, run a white line. Don't put a dark line down the edge of anything to detail it. 
Here we are. And the bark. You can fiddle around down here, sculpturing bark, let it hang off. I think I'll put a branch out through the middle too. Maybe here. And with a little brush we can tidy it up. A few more branches here and there. Not a bad tree. Fence posts. Well, like a tree trunk, you pick up two colours on your knife at once. Where to put the fence posts is a problem. If I start over here, I might find that when I put the fence posts over here that they chop the house out in the wrong place. So that bit of cottage there doesn't look too good, so I'll put the top of the post over that mistake there. And that's the first post. And the second post will have to go about here somewhere, not destroy the cottage. So therefore the post should be about that long. So you can put your posts in and then cross them out to the length they need to be to keep them in perspective. Those posts are usually about four foot high and about nine foot apart. So if they were going away from us, they'd finish about there. And another post back here. One stroke of the knife if you can. I'm just using two colours here, the purple and white, but you can blend in all different colours. Put different colours on your knife for different colour shining on the post. One back there. Now the hole in the fence post, scratch the hole in the fence post. These are usually a nine inch hole and they're nine inches from the top so they'll be about there. That one's crooked but soon fix that. And a few logs laying down, loading the knife with the white on the right side to give us the sunlight. And you can put these on, these bits and pieces laying on the ground as easy as you like. Just throw them on because we can cover them up with grass later. That there should be a gate post, so I'll cross out the holes in it. Put another post here. Maybe one falling down over near the tree. With this one we'll lean it in again. Don't lean it out of the picture, it'll take your eye out of the picture. We want the eye brought into the picture all the time. There we are. Tidy up around the bottom with a fan brush. Cross out anything you don't like. We'll put some foliage up here in a moment. But first of all, We'll do this We'll do this wagon wheel leaning on the post. Just a circle. If you can't draw a circle, don't worry about it. A lot of wagon wheels that are sitting around the bush are not very round anyway anymore. So if you do a circle that doesn't look like a circle, don't worry, it means the wheel's a bit bent. And what makes it look most like a wheel is this dot in the middle. I haven't gone to a lot of trouble with that wheel. I could put more spokes in. It always looks better with a bit of grass growing up through it at the bottom. Now for the foliage on the top of those trees. We'll load the brush with a few colours this time. We'll load the brush with a few colours this time. Purple on one side, chrome green, and then Naples yellow on top of the chrome green. And the dab, dab brush stroke again. It's quite hard sometimes to get this brush stroke to stand out above the trees in the background because we haven't got thin paint back there anymore. But if you put plenty of paint on your brush and you make deliberate dabs, it will come off the brush over the top of the, thin, the thick paint underneath. There we are. A few little flowers around the bottom, looks nice. 
I said dead, dead brush strike again. And with a little round brush, we can tidy up the branches. And there'd be a few branches in the background that stand out a little bit more than what we've got, so I'll touch them up too. Rolling the brush as I go to get the two colours to come off. Well, there's a forest scene. I'll sign it now and that's finished. The main part with this picture is to keep your background thin. Keep these tones of the background trees lighter than the tones of the dark trees here to make the dark trees stand out above the background trees. Little cottage, just a box. A few sheets of iron on the roof, little window, door. They're easy to practice. You can practice them all over your practice board. Fence posts are easy. Remember, just scratch the hole in if needed. I didn't give you any wire on there. I'll put some wire on that post to show you how that's done. It's just load the knife with a little bit of white paint on it and just scratch the wire on. Sometimes it turns out, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes when you're walking along and you see a fence, you can see the wire sometimes and sometimes you don't. So there's no need to go into detailing all your wire. That will do.